Hey guys and welcome back to Mad About Skin. If you're new to our channel, welcome. Here at Mad About Skin, we're passionate about helping you to get the most out of your skincare. So if you haven't already, now's a great time to click the button below, subscribe to the channel, ring the bell, and you won't miss out on any of our fantastic content. If you're one of our regular subscribers, this video is really for you. What we're gonna be talking about is the five companies that you'll never hear mentioned, reviewed, or recommended on this channel. Now, just Straight off the bat, I want to be totally honest with you guys, this isn't meant as a video bashing either or any of these five companies. The reason I'm doing this video, and I try to always share the positivity on this channel, this is all about the things that I want you guys to um, use to improve your skin, to empower people. I really want to be using this channel as a way of bigging up brands and companies, um, products, and people's self-esteem. However... I'm getting loads of comments asking me to review certain products, which is absolutely fantastic. And guys, keep it coming. I love, love, love to review the things that you want me to review. Um, I want to spend my money so you guys don't have to and we can share that information. But I'm getting loads from these particular brands. And rather than you guys just thinking, I'm refusing to um, review these products, I thought I'd go into the detail of why I don't like these brands, why I won't be recommended or reviewing them, and why I think you guys should be avoiding them. Now, of course, some of the reasons why I'm saying we should avoid these um, companies are very specific to that company, and they might change over time. So if they do, I'll give you an update, and I might be using their products in the future, who can tell? However, at the moment, these five brands, I just don't think we should be using or supporting. So... Quite a lot to get through, so I'm going to go straight into number one, which is Mario Badescu. Who hasn't heard of this brand? It was, I mean, it, it launched about five or six years ago. It's a great fanfare. First of all, the Urban Outfitters, and then it became really like a young, at the time, millennial, probably Generation X, or whatever the next thing is after that now, um, consumer base. It was fun. It was funky. It, it was designed to look cosmeceutical, so it was supposed to look like lab engineered and have that high-end packaging and look but also was colourful and f was supposed to be it was all very driven by the image so the reasons I wouldn't use this brand is many fold one if you've ever used any of their products it is just fragrance on fragrance on fragrance everything about their brand is focused on the marketing and the sensorial experience the colour you don't need colour you don't need fragrance in your skincare now I'm not totally, totally opposed to this. There are some great products that happen to have fragrance in there. Problem with Mario Badescu products, they're not great, and they sell through the addition of scent and colour. That's very much part of their marketing, and there's no great natural or um, active ingredients in many of their products to actually make them worth risking the, the um, increased sensitivity from any of the um, additives that they put in there. There was also a huge um, class action lawsuit against them quite a few years ago um, when a couple of, well, a large group of consumers took them to court because their products um, contained um, steroids, well, contained steroid, low levels of steroids, and people said they weren't aware of that, and so they were sued and quietly removed those from their products without really much fanfare, apology, or anything. Now, look, don't get me wrong, steroids are not... A toxic, terrible product that some people made them out to be. However, it is one of those products that if it is in a product, it's an ingredient where if it's in a product, you guys have a right to know. And I think it was just a shady business practice. They never apologised. They just removed the offending article, the offending ingredients from the products and kept going as normal. I just don't like that. So not going to be supporting them. Second is Avon. So this company has been going around for years and decades. Most people's mums probably at some point sold Avon products. The reason they're on the list is because of their sustained use of animal testing. Now, you're going to say, what's the difference between Avon, which tests on animals, and the whole other suite of skincare and companies which test on animals as well. Well, I think there's a subtle difference is that Avon really were one of the first companies about 25 years ago to come out and say, we don't test on animals. We're cruelty free and made a big point about that. And that was one of their real selling points. Now they've regressed. They want to sell their products in China. If you want to sell your products in China, China mandates that animal testing has to have taken place prior to the product being sold to humans. So if you want to sell in China, you have to test on animals. That's a decision that as a company you have to, you make, um, whether you want to, whether you don't, and then you inform the consumer and then they can make their purchasing decision. However, 
the reason Avon's on this list above some other companies which do also test on animals is because they made such a big thing about not testing on animals. Then they decided to want to sell into China, so started testing on animals. But instead of coming out and saying, okay, because of this, we test on animals, however we try to limit it where we can, or etc. You know, putting out a statement to that effect. They put out a statement and they put on one of their website under the animal testing that they don't themselves test on animals However, where it's absolutely required to do so in certain jurisdictions, they'll contract that out. That's rubbish. If you're paying someone to test on animal, your product on animals on your behalf, you are testing on animals. I just wish people would be more open with consumers. As consumers, we have a right to know what we're buying, and I think it just needs to be transparent and clear. And so that's why Avon's on that list. It's not necessarily that they test on animals. I'm not a fan of animal testing. I don't think it's necessary. It's not the fact they do it. It's the fact they hide and subvert the fact that they now do it when they've spent years saying they don't and making a big marketing push on the fact that they don't and i think when you regress you need to be open with your consumers and they're not if guys you want to try some really good cruelty free i'm going to do a whole video on cruelty free skincare but there are some really really great lines of cruelty free skincare out there pixie is a really great one that you can get in the drugstore a little bit pricey but they do do some great products they're not tested on animals and um, lush cosmetics not my taste because they are quite heavily fragranced, but they've got a huge cult following and they do have some great products, particularly some of their natural masks are fantastic, not tested on animals. And Neil's Yard, this is a company here in the UK that are all about natural, using aromatherapy elements in your skincare to get the best results, totally cruelty free and they're fantastic as well. So check those out, ditch the Avon. Third, third, good bit of counting there, third, Glam Glow. So, I don't know where to start with Glam Glow. Again, about five years ago, it was the number one. It was very Instagram friendly. All of their products look great when you put them on. They sparkle, they're iridescent. So you've got all the pictures of on Instagram of the influencers using the product. Just it's they're just a terrible company. So if we start ethically, they're quite dubious. Um, they test on animals. Um, so that's not great if you if you want to do that. They aren't particularly friendly um they've got a couple of workers issues in certain countries which i'm not a huge fan of though they're working through so watching them too hardly on that my main other main issue with them is just the level of unnecessary crap they put in their products yes their glam glow masks look great because they've got um pearlescent coloring they've got mica in there they've got look great. this is all just unnecessary stuff that a could actually harm your skin particularly if you're going to be reactive or have a reaction to those ingredients and why are they there why does your face mask need to glow glisten look like a unicorn or whatever they brand it as it doesn't absolute rubbish i just don't like that again their products tend to be so much focused on the marketing and the gimmicks and just less on the actual quality ingredients in there there's not a right lot of active ingredients in most of their products there's not a lot of quality ingredients in most of their products the price tag is another issue i have you're expecting people to pay 60 pounds up to 100 dollars for a product which actually doesn't do much other than have a good marketing gimmick and ploy behind it i i can't i can't buy into that i think there's some amazing dupes if you love your masks you love to mask there's some amazing dupes for their products. You don't need to buy Glam Glow. It's all a marketing ploy. You're not the extra money you're paying for the products. You're not for all of their products. You're not getting the additionality of benefits. So avoid them. You'll never see me recommending them. For the same line, number four is La Mer. People love La Mer. It has a cult following. It's a bit. I feel a bit outdated now. It was big 15 years ago. I know they still do have a following. However, I don't think it's quite as cult as it once was. Again, what is with the price point? Why are we paying over $100 for a moisturiser? You know, there is no need. They talk the talk, but actually... When you look beneath their ingredients, they're very heavily fragranced. They have a lot of additives um, in their products, which I don't think are beneficial for the skin. They talk about their Miracle Broth, which is their algae infused. In, but they've never actually told us a right lot about what that is. Um, so I don't think you're getting the... Well, I, I know you're not getting the extra benefits from Le Mer over other products for the extra price that you're paying for them and I think you know our motto on this channel is skincare should be fun easy to understand and affordable and Le Mer 
I don't think it's particularly fun. Definitely, definitely isn't affordable. And I don't think it's easy to understand. What is a miracle broth? What is that? I No, no. Le Mer, I just think it's bougie. If you like it, great. There's nothing wrong with them as a company. There's nothing wrong with the product. It's just way too expensive for what it is. And so I can't, in good conscience, recommend it. And then finally, number five is Kiehl's. Again, great cult following. People have raved about their products online. They've got influencers. A couple of things I don't like about them as a company. The price point, it's quite expensive. I haven't been sold on the quality. I've tried quite a few of their products and none of them have actually worked that well. I haven't seen a lot of improvement. I haven't seen a lot of difference. So not sold on the extra money that you're spending for the quality of the product. I don't like how they present their products it just seems really messy and confusing. So if you've ever bought a Kiehl's product, it's got a million one letters all over it. It's just such confusing and difficult to understand product. They're not very clear about what's in their product. So I've seen some of their um, brightening serums and stuff. They say they're secret C. I mean, it's just citric acid. It's just either ascorbic acid or citric acid, depending on which of the two products that you use of theirs. That, that's not revolutionary. And it's presenting it as like, this is the only thing you will ever ever find it just in their products. We can get it far cheaper elsewhere. So I don't like that practice. I don't think they're easy to understand. I think the price point is too up there and I think it's quite cons- confusing as a product um, as a product line. So it's just it just doesn't work for me. So guys, those are the five companies you should just avoid. If you're using their products and you really like them, that's fine. At least you've got all the information now so you can make that informed choice, which is what this channel is all about. So I'm not going to bash any of the companies specifically. And, you know, all companies can change. So I've highlighted some issues, I think, with these companies, particularly around the ethics of some of their testing practices. Companies are allowed to change and evolve. So if these things do change in the future, I'll be the first to update you guys. But at the moment, under the current business practices of these companies, you won't see any of these recommended on the channel. Now, for a totally positive twist on everything, our next video is going to be all about cruelty-free skincare. There are some fantastic and gorgeous cruelty-free brands out there. I mean, I think 2019 for me was the year where vegan cruelty-free stopped being a niche gimmick and actually became good, fantastic ingredient result driven products so there's some great brand sets there so i'm going to be doing a whole video on which i think are the best of the cruelty free and um, vegan product lines you know just great so we're celebrating some of the successes so look out for that one guys i'd love to know if you've had any experiences with the co- um with the companies that I've mentioned today, leave me a comment below. Do you disagree? This, you know, this is a forum. I think providing we're respectful of each other, I'm totally, I'm totally up for challenge and disagreement. So again, leave it in the comments below. Hopefully you'll give this video a thumbs up, guys. I look forward to seeing you in the next one. Take care. Bye.